Full house, huh? It's awesome. Championship house right here. Uh, thank you. Thank you for everybody to, uh, for coming out, uh, to everybody. Um, it's, it's, it's such an awesome feeling to, uh, to sit in front of you guys and uh, the whole world um, uh, celebrating a championship. I think it's everything that uh, we all work for um, here. And I, I just want to congratulate everybody from top to bottom, um, uh, starting with um, our fans, followers, um, supporters, people that have covered us. Um, it's, it's just an incredible feeling. I, I still, it still hasn't sank in uh, uh, to me the, um, from uh, ownership to players, coaches, um, front office, everybody that works, all, everybody that put this together. It's such a, a big thing for our team, uh, our city, our country. Um, to get to this moment. Uh, you can't even describe it, and um, it's why we work. Um, I, I think of this time last summer, and I think I was sweating the same way last summer, too. So. <laughs> I, I don't know why I do all these workouts before I come here and I end up sweating, but um, uh, a different kind of sweat, I think, from last summer. And when I think of the growth of the team, um, uh, how it all started, um, obviously the acquisition of uh, Kawhi. And let me go back and say again uh, to DeMar DeRozan and, and uh, Casey, Coach Casey and um, Jonas Valanciunas, the foundation and what um, all our young players and these guys laid for us to get to this moment um, is huge. And I want to use this opportunity again to thank them. Uh, and. Um, the growth of the team um, was um, started by them. And uh, just the acquisition of um, uh, the great player like Kawhi Leonard. And uh, you know, everybody talks about a gamble. You know, um, if these players, uh, to me, the deals are deals. And if these players don't uh, come with the passion that they have, and he doesn't come with the passion that he has, and leadership, uh, and um, Kyle Lowry and all our players, the growth of Pascal. Congratulations to Pascal. Yesterday was an unbelievable moment for not only a spectacular player and his bright future, but um, what it also means for us on the continent of Africa. Um, but I think of all um, the stages we've training camp, um, our young players, the growth, um, even um, how in the beginning, it was, I don't want to say awkward, but you know, because of Kawhi's personality, you know, we, um, it took time um, to build trust um, on both sides. Um, and you start to build that and you start to see it come together. Um, obviously, Kyle, um, his growth, um, uh, all, our, all our players, um, uh, the coaches, Nick Nurse, his growth, and um, what an unbelievable year, first year um, for him. Um, I honestly, like, I can't, I can't describe it. This is, this is why we work. I don't think yeah, uh, the trophy is not here. I was just going to come and put it down and like walk off um, <laughs> and walk back to Africa. <laughs> Um, but this is this this is why we work. I, I say it, and and it's everybody, you know. Like to to get it, and the NBA championship is so hard, and you need plenty of luck. I, I do want to um, to congratulate Golden State for how long they've done this. And um, those guys are true champions, and that's why I believe like what we did was remarkable to go beat them three times in a row in their gym. Um, those guys are unbelievable. And my conversations with Curry or Bob Myers or, um, um, or Mr. Lakeup, um, that's, it, it, it was so unfortunate with what happened to Kevin Durant and, and, um, and Clay Thompson. But, um, and sometimes things have to go a certain way um, for you to get to this moment. And, um, uh, we thank them for creating that path for us, um, even showing us how and um, what true champions um, that they are. Um, we're here, um, we're celebrating, 
um, while working, uh, it's on to the next. That's how the MBA is. Um, while on to the next issue, and um, uh, which for us is coming back and being champions again. And we want to experience these moments here again and again and again. And um, uh, we want to believe in ourselves uh, here and continue to. And I think this shows that um, we can do this. It's a huge representation for us um, to be the only team outside the United States to win a championship because it inspires people all over the world. And we're our focus, we're our global reach. Um, I feel um, that um, it gives everybody confidence that uh, sometimes not everybody had. Um, I said that we'll win in Toronto and I really believed it. I said that when I got here and I truly believe it and I truly believe that we'll win some more. Um, I have no doubt in my mind. I think um, all the players are excited. Um, I think the coaches are excited. Obviously, Nick Nurse was excited playing the guitar in the concert yesterday um, or whenever it was. But um, we, um, uh, we have an identity now, uh, and, I'm, and um, we're proud of that. Um, Pat Riley uh, it said to me, uh, the championship will never be taken away from you guys, never, ever. It lives with you guys um, forever. And we're proud that we were able to do this because this is one of, um, this is the origin of basketball uh, in the world, and the championship has come here. Uh, any questions you have, and if you don't, I'll head home. <laughs> so you talked about um, winning more championships. So are, are you confirming here that you, you're, you have a long-term future with this team? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, um, it's always been about Toronto. Um, I, I love it here. Uh, my family loves it here. Um, my wife loves it here, which is very important. Um, uh, my kids are Canadians. And um, you want to win more uh, for me. And uh, yeah, I can continue to address um, teams wanting me or, or, and all those things, you know, like that's, that's a blessing in, in, in life. And, um, I, I don't use it in, in, in those kind of, in, in a way that's, um, for me, the blessing is, is, is being wanted here and finding a place that makes you happy and, and finding challenges that um, really make you grow um, as a person. And this place has made me grow as a person. I identify with this place and I, and, uh, I love it, you know, so, um, in, in, in my mind, um, I'm here. With Pascal winning the most improved player last night, what does it say about the organization's developmental program? Uh, it's huge. Um, I think uh, whether you start from our scouting, uh, Dan Tolzman, uh, Bobby Webster, um, Luke Wynn, Patrick Ingubert, Curtis uh, Crawford, all these guys, Keith Barsky, they, these guys do such an unbelievable job. You guys don't even understand how they wear me, my ass out uh, and really wear me out and going to places and um, seeing these guys and um, grinding and grinding and grinding and um, finding all these guys. And to see Pascal do that uh, for me was, um, it was, it was, it's just something else for me to see a player develop so much uh, in three years, have passion. Um, um, he wasn't chosen as an, as an all-star. He still took it to another level. Um, he had challenges here and there in, in the playoffs, still jumped it to another level, never put his head down, and always believed. Is what I believe is how I think myself in, in the NBA. The NBA has given us an, an opportunity. Um, we shouldn't, uh, he, he's been given that talent. He doesn't sit back and try to be a role player or try to be um, just happy with where he is. He has a goal. He wants to be the best. He wants to be on top. And the last thing I'll say is um, we represent an unbelievable continent uh, in Africa, and it says a lot for the youth that we represent. Um, uh, when we go back this summer, um, you can actually like look at this youth and say, this is where we are. This is the opportunity that we're getting. And um, by the way, 
or champions. Yeah, you can actually do it and you can go and win. And, and for me, whether we're in Kigali or whether we're in Dadaab or whether um, we're with the girls in, in, in Kakuma, um, whether we're in Nairobi or in Lagos, anywhere that where we are, uh, that we are, um, the message is the same. And all over the world, the message is the same that we can do it. I think f four of the awards last night were won by international players. That's incredible, you know. For, um, for me, everybody, the NBA, um, whoever it is that's covering our, our games, have to pay attention to this because this is a global reach right here. There's something going on here, um, a vision here that hopefully we saw five years ago, and maybe there's something here 10 years from now. Um, what kind of coverage you can have from here? Um, I don't know, but I know that when I see 40 million people watching the NBA Finals, numbers up from, uh, from last year, when I see uh, 59 Jurassic Park, uh, when I see 9 million people watch a parade, when I see a parade like that, um, I, I don't know that you cannot pay attention to this and want more. Um, Pascal builds that um, for us in the continent of Africa even. Uh, honestly, even if I didn't, I always feel confident. You know, like our organization feels confident, and we do feel confident that uh, he will. But Kawhi is his own man. You know, like he's shown us that since he came here, and um, he's a confident human being. Um, he's an unbelievable person. He is his own person. Um, I, I'm glad we got him for, for the year, because when I, I said this to you guys, that we have to be ourselves and we wear ourselves um, the whole year. I think he saw that. I think we built a trust um, there. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, the relationship I've developed with Kauai, and I know the relationship this organization has, has um, built with Kauai, we will respect his decision. No, I, I do respect that. I always say that the hardest thing in, 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 in this business is trading a player and free agency, and we always have to be ready for both. Um, but I believe winning a championship, him seeing who we are, um, working with his medical staff, uh, combined with our medical staff, and getting him uh, to where he wanted to be, and his priority, when he sat in the press conference, he said, Again, healthy. Uh, you see where he was coming from. I've had times and times and moments with him, and we've talked about this, about um, from last year, his confidence getting back to this year. Um, uh, for us, um, we continue to be us, and I know he will continue to be him. And I know what we've built here. I'm confident. And you see how these things go. Um, I think we have to respect him um, for um, for that decision that he, he, ha he has to make. Well, have you, has he given you any indication of what his priorities are? What are the things that he's looking for in terms of a team to sign? Uh, I've had like very good meetings with him the last, uh, like, last few days. And um, yes, he's told me. Um, and uh, honestly, I'd rather keep um, that conversation between um, me and Kawhi. Um, for now, and um, uh, for me, they've been uh, they've been positive, um, and um, he challenges me the same way that I challenge him. And I think um, uh, the goal is the same, uh, and I appreciate that. Do you have a post uh, July first meeting scheduled, or will you be him for a formal pitch, or is that just a situation that you're going to let play out? Uh, I've talked to his representation and I've talked to Uncle Dennis and uh, we've built, obviously, uh, Uncle Dennis has been around, we've, um, we've built a relationship with him and um, they're, once their scheduling is done, I'm sure we'll figure out uh, a time that we will definitely meet with Kauai. Besides, has there been any update from Oakland Authority on the uh, yes, uh, my lawyers are uh, updating me. Um, uh, Honestly, I'm just with with that incident. I'm going to respect um, uh, what the process is there. 
and the investigation. And uh, I am confident about who I am as a person, my character, and as a human being. So um, I'll, for now, I just respect you know, um, their process there and, um, and wait for the next steps. Do they give you an indication of where they are in the process? Uh, no, um, not, not, not really. Masai, there's been some comment online that people feel that you were carded, they say, or unfairly targeted. Did, if you're willing to comment, did, do you have that feeling? Uh, I, I I honestly I'm going to leave all my uh, my comments till um, the whole investigation is done. Um, I think that's the that's the fair way and the right way to operate when when things like this um, uh, do happen. So um, I I respect authority and I'll wait I'll wait till um, that happens. Can I ask you about next year? Being champions this year, you mentioned effort and everything it takes. You've been blessed. Where do you go when you're uh, you want more. There's no question about it. You know, like, yeah, eager for more. When you talk to Kawhi, you talk to Kyle, you talk to Fred, you talk to um, uh, Serge. Um, Serge came in the other day and he's like, boss man, boss man. I think I, I, I really feel we can win uh, two more. And, and that's their mentality, you know, like uh, Mark uh, Gasol, it, it's his mentality that these are um, speaking to Pascal, all of them um, want to win some more. Nick, um, Nick wants to win some more, and they believe. You have to believe, and when you taste it, um, it it's over. You, you want to do it over and over again, and um, honestly, I, <laughs> you, that, that experience of the playoffs and seeing the intensity and the roller coaster and the ups and downs and um, uh, there's there's nothing like it, um, and you want to keep experiencing that, and you want more and more of it. And I can see how um, Golden State or um, all these guys that have done it are like inspired to do it again. Masai, if I could just go back to Kawhi for a second. I'm sure you've seen the videos over the last few weeks of him out and about with people kind of invading his space, whether he's eating or visiting somewhere. There's some people that think that that could have a negative effect on the Raptors trying to keep him. I just want your thoughts on that and if you have a message for those fans who kind of hover around him when he's up public. Um, you know, I think uh, Kawhi understands that that's what, uh, you know, like um, it, it, it comes with. And um, yesterday I found myself like wearing a, like putting on my hoodie in the, in the airport, you know, like uh, you're some, there's sometimes you want your private space, you know, and, and that's understandable with everybody in life. Uh, but I know he does understand. He doesn't complain, you know, like, but I do think people should respect um, uh, a person's space and the person that, that he is. Um, uh, so uh, I don't think it's 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 that big of a deal. Um, like like we make it. I know social media and all these things are. Um, but that's what happens these days. But um, I feel it's 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 both ways. You know, like give him give him his space. But I think in Kawhi's uh, in Kawhi's mind, he's probably thinking of the next thing. You know. You always have to, you know, that that's why um, we do these jobs is, is to plan for, for all the scenarios. And <clears throat> I, I have that number one where um, um, along with Bobby and, and Dan and Teresa and these guys, we, we continue to um, operate on that one and really attack it the best way that we can. And, um, but in this business, you always have to have uh, plan plan B and plan C and you're always confident that um, those plans as long as you prepare well and I think our team is always very well prepared that we would um, would be would be able to deal with um, whatever comes our way. Masai, the, the Raptors and MLSC have played a huge role in, in setting up you know courts throughout the city for, for kids to go and play. We've learned that you know some neighbors aren't always thrilled um, with the noise that these courts create. Can you just speak to the importance that they play in communities and sort of developing the game of basketball at a very young age? Well, I've heard of the complaints. There's been complaints about um, noise and stuff. Noise from basketballs. Yeah. 
Really? <laughs> <laughs> and sort of threats to take them down and stuff like that. Threats to take the courts down? Yeah. yeah there's a parental rally tonight to keep the basketball hoops up. Are you guys serious that yeah. this is going on? Yeah. I'm just junior public school. Yeah. There's a neighborhood they want to take down. They're saying there's too much noise, too much gathering. They want to take it down. So we'll take those courts to Africa. <laughs> And we'll go build them somewhere else, you know. Like I, 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 I don't know what the details of this is, you know. Like, but um, my my first reaction is anywhere there's a basketball court is a good thing, you know. Like kids play basketball, and um, it, it's my job, so I'm going to be biased towards basketball. However, it's played anywhere it's played, you know, whether it's the noisiest place or the most quiet place. Uh, I'm just going to be biased about a basketball court being put anywhere. On June, on June 30th, I mean, one sort of the big domino for you guys. Do you imagine being uh, mostly a holding pattern until until that gets sorted out? Uh, yes, I think our team is in a good place where you, we can be in that holding part, and we don't have to um, um, react. You know, to anything that's done in any way. Um, so um, we'll wait. He's our, he's our player, and he's a superstar on our team in the league, and we'll continue to, um, uh, to wait on that until uh, we know otherwise. But um, we will have a meeting with him, and um, we'll talk um, as a, uh, from now till then, too. <coughs> Uh, no, uh, honestly, I'm leaving that to him and his 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 group, um, and um, whenever they make up their mind, um, uh, we'll be here, and I know we'll be in touch with them. We've we'll built a relationship with them where, um, honestly, I text with Kawhi last night. I I, I talked to his uncle this morning. Um, so it's uh, for us. It's. Um, there's that trust, regardless of whatever, wherever it goes, um, and there will be constant communication. And based on that relationship and the meetings you had this week, and what you know Kawhi wants from his career as much as you can, mm -hmm. do you have to at least have a sense that you're definitely an option for him to, there's an option for him to resign? A hundred percent. There's always going to be an option. He played here last year. You know, like that's <laughs> that's a, that's a big time option. You know, like in my opinion. Um, I think um, for he has to, he's going to consider that. Um, he played here, I think he had a great experience here, and um, he won a championship here. So how has your life changed since you won? Well, obviously, you're already a superstar in the NBA before this happened, but has anything changed in your day since? Uh, I don't know about a superstar, but um, I, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a family guy, and um, this is important to my wife and to, to my kids, um, to my friends. Um, the things that are important to me are winning on the court and off the court, uh, Kahal. And, and um, my mind now is tackling free agency and how I'm, I'm going to get to Africa, you know, like I think by, the, by the middle of um, July or uh, uh, end of July for everything I do uh, on the continent. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see it like that, you know, like I, I'm a normal human being, normal person, and um, Man, I can't, I can't wait to celebrate this, especially on the continent, you know, like just to give all these kids hope, you know, and, and for them to see um, that, they can, um, that they can make it. When those girls in Samburu gave me this, you know, like um, um, I thought about winning, you know, like, and I thought about how it would be to win and come and celebrate. When I think of all those places we go to, those refugee camps, I think, why do those places exist? You know, like they are not supposed to exist, and what hope do you give these people? Then I think about like where Pascal or Embiid or, 
or, or Yanis, and excuse me, but Yanis is not Greek. Yanis is Nigerian, okay? So um, uh, the, the, um, I think of where all these guys started, you know, and where I started. And I'm telling you, like, there's going to be one day I'm going to tell an unbelievable story. I guarantee you that it's going to be an unbelievable story. And you know what? That story includes a championship. And I'm, I'm, I'm so freaking proud that it does. You know, I'm so happy that the NBA has given me this opportunity, that Adam Silver gave me this opportunity, Larry Tannenbaum gave me this opportunity, or the Cronkies, or Tim Lawicki, who, however it is, I'm, I'm really appreciative that I'm here, because I shouldn't be. You know, like if you if you really look at life, I shouldn't I shouldn't be here. I'm from Zaria in northern Nigeria and I find myself here. I find myself getting calls from presidents. I find myself, you know, um, uh, interacting with Kyle Lowry or Kawhi Leonard or Steph Curry or Kevin Durant or Whoever these guys are, um, my guys in the NBA, um, other GMs, and it's so competitive. And I'm sorry to rant on, you know, like, but man, this is Canada here, you know, like, what an opportunity, what a country. Uh, and I always tell some of my guys I talk to, you know, like, it bothers me that we're not confident enough that we don't think we can do it. And there's so much opportunity here to do it even bigger even bigger than us, even bigger than what's going on here. Six players were drafted from Canada in the draft. You know, um, Nick Nurse is coaching the Canadian national team. How big is that? You know, eight players were drafted from Africa in uh, this draft. How big is that? You know, like, where is it going? And what can we say is going to happen 10 years from now? That's what I, I know I'm about. And I know that my little boy, my little son, or my daughter, one day I'm going to tell them an unbelievable story. Um, and I say it again, it includes a championship, and I'm damn proud that it does. Quite. do you down the road think basketball could replace hockey as the top sport in Oh, that's a touchy subject here, yeah, but that's... <laughs> Where's my handkerchief on that one? You know what, Shani is my boy, and so is Kyle. But I really do think so. Yeah, I, I really do. Um, that's that's the, um, uh, the way basketball is growing um, just around the world. And um, we saw the following. Uh, I do think that we're lucky in a place like Canada that there's room for baseball, there's room for basketball, there's room for, um, uh, for hockey, there's room for soccer. And I remember here six years ago, five years ago, um, uh, we're talking about uh, can any team here ever win a championship again? The soccer team does, the basketball team, the basketball team has, and I guarantee you the hockey team will. Guarantee they will. That's just how sports is. Sports comes around. Okay, everybody thinks it's doomsday and it's oh this is not going to happen. It all comes around, and it came around for the Raptors, and it's going to stay around. Has taken a lot of hits over his playoff performances in the past, and people saying that he can't get it done. What do you think his playoff run, winning a title, does for his legacy in Toronto? Uh, one of the best, I think, really, arguably the best Raptor, you know, like ever. Um, when you think of what Kyle has done, I, I tell you, uh, what, the growth of Kyle Lowry um, from um, from when I got here uh, to today is remarkable. And there's something about that guy, uh, honestly. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't that, I'd have traded his butt. I'm telling you. Yeah, because there's something about him that's all competition, that's all winning. Yeah, and uh, honestly, people say, you know, like, uh, um, I, I know it was a tough period when DeMar was, uh, was traded. I, I know how both of them really um, took it hard, and I apologize for that. And I, I saw the loyalty. I, I saw um, who he really was. And honestly, that's why I didn't react, because I know how he is inside him and what he thought um, basketball-wise. And he just continued to grow and grow. And um, outside of Carl coming one day or two days here where he's moody or he doesn't want to uh, practice or something or he... 
he's never rude or he's never been disrespectful. He's just not that kind of a person. You know, like he'll go about his way or he'll go about his business. And um, we just were not communicating all the time like we usually have during that period. And that's full transparency here. Um, and after we had that conversation, everybody tells me it's a different person. You know, like I think he felt more comfortable. I think the whole team, everybody began to come together uh, in a different way. And the growth, uh, to see him have that game in game six, you know, like uh, you, you have no idea what it meant to me. Yeah, you have no idea what it meant to everybody um, uh, to see him just lift that. And he did it throughout the playoffs. And um, he lifted this team. He had a sense of calm. I give Kawhi credit, you know, like for giving us that sense of calm, that confidence, you know, like to go out there and really believe, even when we're down um, to the Sixers or down uh, to. Um, Orlando or down to Milwaukee or even when the momentum was going a different way um, Kyle just remained calm uh, and it's a, it's a credit to him uh, it's credit to Kawhi for bringing that to our team a credit to Nick Nurse for bringing everybody together because leadership counts there Uh, you know, when San Antonio uh, came here, uh, I've never said this to anybody, but uh, I, I, something unbelievable happened. Uh, uh, DeMar came into our locker room, and to show you the class uh, human being he is, uh, he came up to me, and, and he hugged me, and he asked me how my family was doing. Yes, I, um, I know it hasn't happened yet. You've probably been asked before, but that you might get an invite from the White House to come down there. I don't want to ask you just whether you will or won't go, but why that decision uh, maybe is important for you guys to say yes or no and, and what it means. Um, I, I don't think, you know, the, the White House is going to be judged by whether we come or not or if we are going to be judged um, whether we go or not. I think collectively we'll... Um, um, we'll make a decision. I think everybody knows what my decision is. Um, um, I think a priority for us would would be um, uh, going to see uh, the president in our country, in Canada, and um, I think we'll, uh, we'll we'll go from there. Um, I think that's <laughs> that's that's my that's my thoughts on that. Um, if I remember right, I think we had reached a point where um, you could tell that there was a little bit of, you know, like, um, just not being comfortable in the, in the team. And I thought that was the right time to address it, especially like that it was around the trade deadline. And, and was it an easy meeting once, once you got started? Uh, no. Um, I think I'll, yeah, I'll leave that bit, uh, the, uh, to between me and Kyle. Um, but um, the meeting lasted about two hours, and it wasn't easy. Uh, it's, it's always a difficult meeting when you, you are both direct and truthful to each other. And um, Kyle is the same way that I am. But it's funny, Demar always used to say that. And, um, and uh, but we resolved it. Sorry, when did the team begin the early stages of planning for the trade? And in your mind, what went wrong with the setup? I think, uh, you know, and honestly, like, um, uh, my heart goes out to um, uh, the people that got hurt. And, and um, I was going to come out with a statement, but I thought I'd wait till today. Um, I will reach out uh, to them eventually, and I know um, our organization has already. Um, uh, that was a very unfortunate situation, I'll say that. Um, but we're learning, you know, like it's our first time. And I also had to leave um, this to the authorities, um, whether it's the police or um, the mayor's office or um, just the organizers are, um, overall. Um, 
you make mistakes when you when you do things um, for the first time, uh, and I think um, my feeling and my hope is that there are more championships so we can correct correct that. Um, I think there was so much excitement. Um, I didn't even, by the time we knew it had gone to five hours of that whole thing, you know, it says a lot about the city, the country, and how people feel. Uh, and unfortunately, with this thing, sometimes there's uh, things like this happen. But um, I think the, the, the police handled this very well. Um, I thought Matt Devlin did an unbelievable job while we were um, on that stage of handling it. Um, um, I think we'll do better. Um, I think it's Maya Angelou that said, um, when, you, when you know better, um, you do better. Can I ask you what it meant uh, to you when DeMar DeRozan came back during the season, sought you out, and, and, and spoke to you? Uh, it meant the world. I, I, I didn't speak after that until I went home, and I went, I, I went home with um, uh, this face and my my wife asked me <laughs> what was wrong. Um, but it, it's it's remarkable. I think um, but with everything that happened uh, last summer, I think um, uh, Demar Derozan is unbelievable. People don't understand how hard uh, that was um, for me. It was. Uh, I know it was harder for him. He's the one. Um, he's the subject. He's the he's the person that got traded. But man, you think of um, I, th I think of the growth of that kid and and even my relationship with him and where he got to and um, I, I had to walk I had to walk around this um, I had to walk around this hotel in Kenya um, for two hours at 4 a.m. Um, just to sum up enough courage. Um, to call the mother Rosen, yeah, that's two hours. Um, so it's not it's not an easy thing. I still think about that. Um, so it meant a lot for him to come and and give me a hug. And me, at the end of the day, this is life. Time heals things. And one day, um, uh, I know I'm confident that one day um, we'll both sit down and talk about this. I have been in in touch with Coach Casey. Um, he's um, uh, we text, and he's um, he's been great, you know. Like, and I know time heals things, and I think um, with time they'll understand to um, what why these decisions came about. So, when you look back at these last couple of months, what are you most proud of? You know, um, I walked um, in the I walked in the. Um, in the arena in, in Milwaukee, and we're down two. And I, I'll never forget watching our players like come out of there. And um, Kyle nodding at me. And, um, and Kawhi gave me a fist bump. And Mark Gasol walked by me, and he said, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And I, the amount of confidence, you know, like um, Nick, um, when I spoke to him, um, the amount of confidence that they had um, was, was remarkable. You know, like we played um, three unbelievable teams. Um, everybody forgets that, okay, Orlando um, was coming with great momentum from the season. Um, I think the Philly is a phenomenal team. Um, with um, great size, and and Milwaukee was the best team in the NBA, and then you come and play the world champions. But that moment, I think there, it really said a lot to me that um, that there's something, you know, like there's something about there's something about these guys um, that's um, they Kawhi brought a lot of calm. Uh, to the team, and you could tell it rubbed off, and it rubbed off really, like, honestly. Miss, I'm just thinking about the day you brought the Lavash students here in the community building that you do uh, basketball without borders. What, is, what does your activism look like throughout the summer and, and moving forward? 
I, I don't know if I can say this yet because my wife doesn't know. <laughs> so this is going to get me in trouble. Um, but uh, yes, Basketball Without Borders I've done for um, how many years. It's a priority um, for me. And um, I'm really, really excited about uh, Giants of Africa this year. We're going to six different new countries. Uh, and the countries will be announced in a, in a, um, in a few days here. Um, that that period in August is always um, it's, it's the best time of my life. You know, like traveling around the continent and identifying with all these people and these youth. Um, that that time of um, when those Laloche kids come here um, every year. There's 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 nothing like that, you know. Like to see those kids and have that opportunity to come here and uh, experience the Toronto <coughs> city and a basketball game. Um, um, we have we have to figure out ways to take it to another level to get to give even more youth uh, opportunities um, with with this great, I think, city and country and um, this great league that we that I work in or we work in is is, is phenomenal. Hassan, have you determined yet how many players who contributed during the regular season but are no longer with the team are going to get rings? And how do you make that, that decision? Uh, that's a Bobby Webster question, honestly. Like, I don't know how that works. You know, like, I, I don't know what um, the... Um, I don't know how much time you have to serve on on the on the team and and all of that. But honestly, if I could give everybody rings, I'd give everybody rings, including you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about your Doug, yeah, one regardless. <laughs> Talk about your sixth country tour in Africa this summer. How great would it be to have a preseason game there? So you're going to Tokyo. Is that something you would want to see? Can Adam Silva hear this question right now? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, trust me, while pushing, and I know the league is well, it, it's gonna come. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna come, and I guarantee you it's gonna be the Raptors. You know, like somewhere, somehow, there's gonna be a game in Africa, uh, NBA game, and Adam is gonna kill me for saying all of this right now. But I'm gonna say it. You know, like it just, I mean. When you look at all the African players, you know, like, and the growth of the league, and I think even um, he's, Adam has done such an unbelievable job with growing, um, whether it's the, um, the new league um, on the continent, it's, um, it's, it's only going to get uh, better and bigger. And um, we're so excited about that. And I know um, Amadou Fall was just made the, the president of uh, the new bar. Um, I know it's going to happen uh, someday, somehow, and um, I, I know we will be we'll, we will heavily be involved. Larry is really big on that, and um, we're we're excited about that. So you have uh, a couple of potential free agents. I think Danny Green is a free agent. Marcus Saul, I guess he has until tomorrow, the next day to opt in. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any idea of how their decisions affect uh, will be affected by Kawhi Leonard? And um, we've we've spoken at length with them and and their agents and I think they know um, what the effect uh, of um, Kawhi's decision uh, is. But um, while we're really approaching it like we want to bring everybody back uh, on this team, that's a priority for us and um, how we can how we can run it back. And um, I think they know that and we've had good communication uh, towards that. I have no indication yet, um, and I know um, Bobby has been in converse conversations, and I had conversations with. Uh, I'm really close to um, Mark's agent, uh, and we had a great conversation with Mark. So um, we'll figure it out. I know. Thur I think Thursday or Friday is the is the date. Uh, I think Pascal has gotten to a place where um, uh, he's he's definitely a priority for us, and it, it's definitely going to be a conversation that we'll have. Uh, and um, I talked to his agent yesterday, and we're going to meet uh, in 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 summer league, and we'll talk. I think we'll talk some more about um, Pascal's future. Masai, 
Now that the NBA season is over, lots of people are saying basketball is over, but they are forgetting the WNBA is still going on. Two-part question, there's rumors that the WNBA will be coming to Toronto. What are your thoughts on that and what do you think it would bring to the city? Doug has been pushing that for how many years, sending me 10 texts every month that we should bring the WNBA here. Um, I, I, I truly believe in uh, women's basketball. Even uh, uh, camps have increased with um, uh, women's basketball. And I talked to, I, I talked to Chine about how um, the the NBA, the WNBA had to take a new, um, I think, identity and with the new commissioner and. Um, I think new leadership there. I think that's the goal. Um, and people are paying more attention to that league. I see more NBA players going and supporting, I think, which is, uh, which is unbelievable. Um, I can't say um, with, um, uh, with ownership here, um, we, we haven't discussed that um, honestly per se, but um, maybe it's the future now. Uh, we've won a championship. We can go and demand more. <laughs> Masai, you can't deny your passion for the city, and it's kind of trickled down to the fans. And you talked about identity earlier. How would you describe to people the identity of this team? Um, there's something about this team that um, reaches out to every person in this world. Yeah, there's, there's just something unique about it, whether you're talking about a kid from North Philly or a kid from Campton or a kid from Spain or Kinshasa or um, Douala or wherever. Um, and it's, it's not only that. Um, I, I think Alex McKechnie claims he's Scottish. Um, uh, by the way, he's unbelievable. I think he, he lifted us in, in many ways this season um, with his remarkable work that he did. Um, whether it's Bobby Webster from Hawaii or one from all over the world, um, and um, Jeremy Lin from Taiwan, it's, it's crazy, you know, like what we represent uh, here. And it's something that we're proud of. Yeah, we're really, really proud of because it identifies with um, what Toronto is, is, is diversity, is what, um, is what uh, 44 said to me when he came to the games, you know, like is, wow, look at the people, um, look at um, the different types of people um, at the game is unique. Um, you come to a Raptor game and um, it trickles down. Um, and I, I'm so proud of that. And we can even take it more uh, to another level because um, more youth are going to identify with that um, forever. Um, you think about the Vince Carter effect, and then you think about um, the Kyle Lowry and, and DeMar DeRozan effect, um, and now you think about the Kawhi effect. You know? So whether it's my son that's three or um, a lot of the kids now, um, this is what they are going to remember. This is how they are going to start playing basketball. And 20 years from now is going to be even bigger. Um, I think that's what this team embodies. That's what this team, I think, um, uh, shouts to the whole world. So you mentioned Vince Carter. Any interest as he enters free agency? Uh, let me deal with that number one free agent first, that big one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll figure out like the, 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 the rest. But I saw Vince um, during the finals, and he was he's great, too. He's unbelievable. And, um, there's a place for him, you know, um, here uh, in history. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's nobody that's going to, to stop that. So you're talking about this franchise in terms of usually reserved for like a Real Madrid or Manchester United, yeah. a global team. Mm -hmm. Is that the vision you have? Is this bigger than the NBA? Yes. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. I, I said, you know, um, I, I said it jokingly, but there's a new, um, is it a, 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 is United or Liverpool called the Reds or something? You know, like we're the new Reds right here. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to capture the world. That's how they started. Um, that's how they started capturing the world. And you could see, you could see in the coverage. I know the amount of people that reached out and everything you saw 
uh, when we're playing. There's just a different reach from here. Let's call a spade a spade. This is what it is. And we should have seen this years ago, and we're seeing it now. Let's plan for years to come. You know, there is something here. I don't know if there should be more teams in the NBA, you know, like that are outside the United States. But this speaks a lot, that a team from outside the United States can win a championship in the NBA and can have a strong identity and identify with people around the world. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that because this is what this game is about. This is what Adam has built, you know, like around the world. Yeah, the NBA is everywhere. We go on that screen, on that TV screen, there's no masks, there's no, uh, there's no helmets, there's no nothing. You see the players right there, and you can watch on your phone anytime, two minute highlights, five minutes, last quarter, everywhere around the world, it doesn't matter where you are, people are watching the NBA. People are watching all these players. And we should build on that. Yeah, we should build on that. It should not be, you know, mockery of oh, why in the cold and people don't want to come here and all that nonsense. That's past. Nobody is talking that stuff now because we have a championship now and we believe in us. And it should be how we reach the world, um, not screaming mockery and making fun of uh, the team and uh, people don't want to come here and it's cold and whatever. Um, uh, I don't want to go on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, before so, I get fined. Donovan Bailey just tweeted about you. He said, let me get this straight. My guy Masai traded DeRozan and Portal for, uh, for Kawhi and Danny Green and didn't even finish in the top three for executive of the year. I know they vote for the playoffs, but come on. What's your reaction to that? Donovan's tweet. I, honestly, like, there's, like I, Donovan is my guy, you know, like, I, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd swap that trophy that we have here, and I wish I, I wish it was here right by me. Um, there's there's nothing like it, you know. Like any every other thing, you know, like is is, uh, and I and I, I I honestly feel John Horse was the was the executive of the year, and I think Tim Conley should have been right there um, with him. That's 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 my opinion. Those two guys did a remarkable job with their team and. Everybody in the NBA, people don't know how much a, a challenge this is. Um, uh, it's uh, these guys, every single one of them is trying for their team and doing an unbelievable job. And I think John really deserves it. And I think Tim deserved uh, to be right up there with him. Since I, we hear a lot of talk about how diverse the fan base of this franchise is. We see an international group on the roster as well. What is it about the sport? Right making it so accessible to so many people? Um, I, I, I think um, the, the players, you know, I, I, I loved listening to Larry Bird, uh, yes, last night. It was remarkable, like, listening to him speak. Um, the, the player, uh-oh, <laughs> we have it right here, baby. Yes. Yeah, th that, that's the trophy. I'm taking, I'm taking it with me. By the way, I think Teresa Rush has like a website. Like we, we have to like apply to like have it with us, uh, which is really cool. Um, but what was the question again? Yeah, what do you think about, <laughs> about the sport? What is it that makes it so accessible to so many people? Um, uh, as I say, you can. Uh, for me, the players, you know, like we, we've got. Is every player has his own story, you know, and um, whether I think of, think about our team uh, or other players, I'm not allowed to comment much on other players, but I'm proud of those other players, you know, like um, I'm proud of what LeBron does, what Kevin Durant does, what Curry does, what Yanis does. All these guys in bead, they 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 carry this league in such an unbelievable way. Yeah, and um, and the coaches, what the coaches represent, and how they all have their own identities. You know, um, there's something to be said. Um, the great work the NBA does all over the world is is something that's really underrated. Yeah, people don't talk about. Um, we, I come here and make all the noise about basketball without borders in Africa, but there's basketball without borders in Asia. There's basketball without borders in Europe. There's basketball without borders in South America. All this work and all the work that all the players do, um, people see it. It affects youth. 
No, it, it's. I saw Brad Bill yesterday come up with those two kids. You know, like from the work he does in in Washington, it's incredible. You know, like it's continuous. Everybody takes pride in in it, and there's something about the NBA that's different from other sports. It's a family. Yeah, we can trade all we want. Players can go to anywhere they want. Um, we can compete with other players, uh, other teams. But there's something about it that's a family, you know, like, and I know we're proud of it. Every, all of us are proud of the NBA. I don't understand. When it comes to free agency, has any of the guys came and said... Uh, our own players, or what do you mean? Our all? own players, like players on the roster right hmm. now. Have they come up to you? Uh, no, we haven't, we haven't had those those kind of conversations. I think um, uh, first of all, these guys are they are they are Toronto Raptor players, you know. Like, and I think they believe in themselves too, you know, and and they want to win. So um, Kawhi has become part of them, and they are going to treat it like that, you know. Like, but um, in any other case, I think they are their own players too. You know, like I have to respect that, them that way. I have to respect what Freddie has done. I have to respect what Serge has done, what Mark has done. And um, we as the organization really respect all of them from, um, from head to toe. Masab, will you be able to take the trophy to Africa with you when you go this summer? Does it have to stay here? Uh, I have to apply to Teresa Rush, and uh, she will tell me where I can take it. No, seriously, she tells me <laughs> where I can take it and where I cannot. So um, I, I told my guy, uh, Tim, to put in my application uh, yesterday. Has it ever been to Africa? Uh, this, I think it will be the first. That's a really, really good question. I think it will be the first. And guarantee you is going then. Since you asked me that question, we're going to guarantee you that <laughs> it has to be a first. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.